You can learn more about Cormac McCarthy's writing philosophy through his love of physics than the statements he's made about writing and literature. We are about to hear from Cormac McCarthy on his favorite physicist. And what he's about to say is vital to understanding how he views himself as a writer, why he moved west, and the evolution of his character in general. So if you guys don't already know, Right Conscious is the headquarters for Cormac McCarthy content on YouTube. I have a Cormac McCarthy course up right now, linked down in the description below, that is so packed with value, no one on BookTube has ever done anything like it. I also have a sick Cormac McCarthy t-shirt collection if you were interested. So it would mean a lot to me if you supported the channel in one of those ways, but let's hear from Cormac McCarthy himself. I want to go back to that, to that community of physicists who you met, because that is a fascination of yours. These, not just physics, but the physicists themselves in particular. Those guys, Enrico Fermi, Niels Bohr, yeah. Heisenberg. So, I mean, just talk about them for a bit, because I know you're fascinated by them, and I'm curious about what it is about them that interests you. <sighs> what, it's very easy. Mm -hmm. The reason they're interesting is because they're smart. That's that's the beginning and the end of it. Mm -hmm. Smart people are fun. Mm -hmm. You know, they're fun to talk to. Right, but you're. But what about them? What about what about Pauli? What about uh, Heisenberg? Well, what's interesting mm -hmm. about them is basically how young they were. Yeah. I mean, they, you know, they showed up in Summerfield's lab when they were like 19. Mm -hmm. And uh, they didn't have much to go on. They, they, they knew there was something there because there's stuff missing. And uh, so they decided it was uh, quantum mechanics. I mean, that's astonishing. And I So one of my favorite parts about Cormac McCarthy is that he builds up through mystery, that he is a derelict and it hangs out with all these derelict characters. He's been divorced three times. He plays pool. He rides horses. He knew how to write all those characters in Sutri because he was hanging, hanging around people like that. However, Cormac knew that he was better than that. And he knew from the age of eight years old, he said in an interview that he knew that he was a great writer and could do it at eight or nine years old. That speaks about his confidence and level of talent if he knew that. And all that he had to do to become great was just to sit down and do it for a little bit. Are there any Orchard Keeper fans out, th out here? You guys know that that is a wild and advanced debut novel. And McCarthy had such a belief in his work that he left his first wife. He told his first wife to go get a second job after she just had a kid because he said, baby, one day I'm going to be great. He didn't mention that it was going to take 30 years to make any money, but eventually there was an ulti ultimatum. You get a job and don't write as much or I'm leaving. And McCarthy said, whatever. Same thing in a sense happens with his second wife. He was feeling stuck with Sutri. He had started Sutri before he had started The Orchard Keeper. He had hunt, uh, 800 pages done before The Orchard Keeper was even published, but he couldn't finalize it. He couldn't bring the cohesion together because I think like, I don't know if you've ever experienced it. When you are in your hometown or somewhere you're very comfortable with, you have to be ripped out of it to be able to look back at it with a different perspective. And so that's what Cormac McCarthy did. He told his wife, second wife that is, I'm moving, took her out on her birthday, and the next day he moved to Tucson and then later on El Paso. However, when you move, you don't just leave all your problems behind you. You don't not become a, a man who loves to hang out with derelicts and you have this super crazy self-confidence. That doesn't go anywhere. However, there was a freeing up of McCarthy's not just time because he left a very social life, a very social wife. There was a landscape surrounding him that motivated him. Texas, freedom. And after five ye years of living in El Paso, he finally finished Sutri. So back to his favorite physicists. McCarthy started studying physics around this time. It was about, he moved to El Paso seven years before he received the MacArthur Award. But by that time, he was already well-read in physics. And I'm very sure that this is when he really picked up the heat on that. And so he's not an individual like McCarthy is not going to be attracted to the very classical, boring people, even some of the older classicists, classic physicists like Albert Einstein and that whole crew. He's going to be looking at Bohr and Heisenberg and Oppenheimer and all these prodigal people who align with his vision of these, they have these libertarian mindsets where they are just doing science to do science and they're solving massive amounts of problems and they're these ubermensch figures. Some even got involved with the nuclear bomb. And that's who McCarthy started to fill that derelict hole with. 
it had gotten bigger and more refined, but it didn't go anywhere. He could go to bars and pick up chicks and go to pool halls like he did, but he evolved from a writer to something more. And these physicists, I think, helped take them there. It helped bridge the gap and show him it wasn't just a bunch of random nerds or old people, that there were people like him inundated with this. Because McCarthy has said endlessly that he doesn't like hanging around writers. He doesn't have many friends that are writers because they have nothing to talk about. He likes hanging out with smart people. They were smart people, and that's why they were interesting. That became a focal point of a point porn of Cormac McCarthy's life. All the people back in Knoxville, his whole social group with his wife, and all those people weren't able to live up to his grandiosity. But these physicists, these physics guys, are just in a totally different league than him. Even the guys that he was meeting, even or um. Murray and all the people at the Santa Fe Institute were much smarter than him, some of which were just as well versed in literature and the humanities as him. And because McCarthy never got past his bachelor's degree and really moved into post-secondary education or academia at all, he never really got to experience how that feels to be around a bunch of really smart people. And he went straight to the smartest people, the mathematicians and the physicists. And in my opinion, this is such an OG move. When a writer who's already great becomes well-versed in something else, it helps them do nothing but grow. Writers who become too, you know, start navel-gazing too much, which can happen, or who get too inundated with family and bogged down with all that, never seem to have this growth. But McCarthy's growth in math and physics, I think, sharpened his mind and gave him different perceptions of reality and really started to give a scientific life to the rebellion that he was doing in Tennessee. McCarthy was raised in a very conservative way, in a very conservative place, Blount County, Tennessee. And his philosophy and his outlook on the world and maybe some of the nihilism and the darkness really was somewhat new. The hippie movement was decades from starting. The existentialist movement probably hadn't invaded there except for individual people. So McCarthy probably always felt like the best and knew more than other people. But then suddenly he could clarify his vision through physics and then have people just demolish him in terms of worldview and what he knew and help him grow that vision with all the people at the SFI and who he met through the MacArthur Fellowship. So I just think it's very interesting that a lot of the philosophers, the writers, the physicists, the mathematicians, even the uh, Alicia, the character who wrote in Stella Maris, are mirroring him at some level, have this prodigal and similar outlook to him. So once again, links are down below in the description if you guys are wanting to get into the super sick Cormac McCarthy course or buy a Cormac McCarthy t-shirt and support the channel. But if not, I will see you guys in the next Cormac McCarthy video. Peace.